Whoa, what is growing on? It feels a little foreign here picking up this camera. It has been a few weeks. Your boy over here has been slacking. Um, just a lot going on. Kind of wanted a little bit of a break. Kind of a digital detox per se and everything with the new properties. Kind of just slowed my flow a little bit, but we are back at it again. Um, actually today I'm making a plant delivery down in Inglewood, Florida. And I was just here a couple of weeks ago and I actually pulled in with the plants and I brought all these rare Japotacabas and I'm like looking around and I'm like, this is a nursery. I'm like, they're gonna be reselling my babies. I was a little upset to even be letting go of those plants and got talking to the caretaker and he's like, no, this isn't a nursery. This is a private collection. I'm like, whoa, bringing the camera back here. So I'm at Mr. Rick's house today. I'm back again. Daniel's gonna be giving us a tour and this place was absolutely mind blowing. This is a private garden, kind of like what I would say a botanical garden. Sounded to me like it started off with a lot of natives and things for butterflies and it has just evolved into so much more. So much more that I had to break out the camera here before Christmas. By the way guys, Jim is back. He got back a week or two ago. Getting over there in like a day or two. I'm gonna get you guys a follow up. He's not here as much this year, but don't worry, Jim is coming. Let me go find Mr. Daniel, stay tuned. There he is. How's it going? How you doing, sir? Doing fine, how are you doing today? Good, you wanna to, uh, tell everybody who you are? Uh, my name's Daniel, and I help take care of this awesome property here, Gardens and Glass, Rick and Margie Parker. Oh. So Daniel, um, where are we at? How long has this property kind of been getting established? How big is it? The one that we're standing on currently has been establishing for about five to six years. Um, then to my right, we'd be establishing for probably four four years plus or four years actually minus because we have a lot of new stuff over there and then the property to my left that you'll also see is mostly fragrance plants and then that's been going on for about eight years now very cool man this isn't a bad job you get to work here in this botanical garden huh this is heaven no yes. uh, i cannot ask for a better thing to do for my life like i i love this more than anything that's awesome man uh, in this area, we have a Florida wildflower mix. It rotates and changes, usually starting with um, cosmos, and then it'll move into other different native flowers. As they die back, something else will keep popping up. And we have a zinnia patch, which the rabbits always raid us and knock them down within a couple of weeks. You said scent. I caught a, a, a whiff, aroma of something coming in. Do you know what that was? That was strong. Uh, oh, mm. right up here. Um, as you see these butterflies flying oh, the around. the acacia. Yeah, this yeah. is a sweet acacia. A nice Florida native. Unbelievable, yeah. It's got some spines on it, but great for an edge or keep it up in the air. And the butterflies love it. And as I said, this property was planted for butterflies. So we have mostly host plants and flowering plants for nectar here. That's amazing. Um, on this, this was a, a Suriname cherry hedge that we cut back. It was much taller. Um, cut it back and then we put these vines on it. These are Dutchman pipe vines. Um, I might be able to show you a flower at some point. I don't see it blooming so much, but they are a host to the Polydomus butterfly. Um, they have a really neat looking larva and a beautiful butterfly. You can see the butterflies just dancing over here. Probably more when the sun's out yeah, too, right? Yeah, when the right? sun's out, yeah. you've never seen more clouds of varied butterflies in your life. That's incredible. What is this, um, the bleeding heart? Yeah, okay. bleeding heart. It's uh, an invasive here. It was planted when they originally moved in because they're from um, Indiana. So pretty flowering plant. She wanted it because of its beauty and then it kind of got out of control. So we're always trying to get rid of it now, even though it's so pretty. We would rather have some of our less beautiful uh, host vines and our beautiful passion flower vine, which you could see above your head right now if you turn around. Um, it's kind of mixed in everything. They're not opened up right now, but they recently restarted blooming again, which we're happy about. 
Um, this yard is mostly for fragrance. This is the house that they live in. Um, so majority of things around it are to smell nice either in the daytime or evening time, depending on where they're at or enjoying their time. Um, have different gardenias, uh, day blooming jasmine, different native plants like Hercules Club inside of there that's kind of oh, nice. branching out or like spreading underground right now and popping up all over. Got like a different little, like a little forest. You call this a day jasmine, the tree? Yeah, day bloomer. Day bloomer um, nice. It smells like chocolate, chocolate vanilla when the sun's out and it's burning hard. So with that, the hotter it gets, the more fragrance comes out. Everybody um, knows our favorite fire bush. Yeah, fire bush enough about is that awesome. One. And then we have something else that's cool. It's a necklace pod. Put a couple of these in your pocket. Ooh. Nice seeds you can try. Nitrogen fixer, right? Yep, yeah, nitrogen fixer. What I'm trying to get into is more chop and drop, but of native chop and drop. So things aren't invasive. They're contributing to the environment, pulling in our host butterflies and then adding awesome nitrogen to the soil. So rather than putting something invasive that'll take over, these things won't take over, but still are contributing. I like it, man. We have a cool dwarf Lang Lang here. Um, fragrance is pretty nice on them, Ooh. but not as strong as the, the tall one. It's strong, it's hitting me. That's all you yeah. have to do is say it. Yeah. It's probably coming off this flower. Wow. Oh. A big old patch of porter weed that I'm always trying to knock back. This is taller than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We had some a plumbago hedgerow here. Uh, we recently cleaned up. We also have these neat fragrance trees called Joy Tree. It's like what they get the joy perfume from the bud or Michela Champa is one of the names. This is the the white version of it, but we also have yellow versions elsewhere. Really? Um, I can't pronounce that one to say. I always yeah. say like Michaela Alba. I, I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, I, just, I just say, I don't know if it's proper or not. I've just read it, so that's all I know. Works. Uh, we recently planted, um, I'm crazy about bananas, so now we've been planting more and more. So these ones we planted in the summertime. Um, mostly dwarf namwa. Um, and then the taller one in the middle is giant Namwa, and then intermixed we might have a Mona Lisa or two. Nice. Those are my three favorite bananas for the area. Uh, Mona Lisa is like a, replaces the Cavendish, but actually makes like big racks of bananas that make big bananas that compared to a store-bought banana, taste better, hold better, and uh, far superior. That's one of the Fia varieties if I remember. Right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the number of it, yeah, but yeah, they're they're awesome. I highly suggest planting the Mona Lisa. So other than a little bit of grass out by like the the street, there's no grass here. Not anymore. Um, wow. He started before I was here with a little push lawn mower, and it kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I've been here for about a little over four years now, so in that amount of time, we've really like. Rick is plant obsessed and I'm plant obsessed and then you mix the two of us together and it just becomes overwhelming. <laughs> what is this, a cutbacks wax jambu or something crazy? No, what this is, is a really cool thing. It's, uh, you gotta check out the base of it. It's I called see it, it's like a knot now. Sha shaving brush is Whoa. one of the names. It has a million names. Um, Rick likes to call it the, the one day wonder because it'll make a flower and it falls off the next day. That is wild looking. Uh, it's getting ready to butt out right now. Yeah, and oh, it makes like it. Yeah. They're really cool bonsais. Hmm. Um, we have the name of it here, Pseudo Bombax. Pseudo Bombax, okay. Yeah, I like the really, name. <laughs> yeah, it's a super cool that plant. That is really cool. Um, and then this is a, it's a, it's a gardenia. It's what totally is this one? unique. Um, I got too many plant names in my head. They don't always come up. Um, Oh, it'll, it'll come to They didn't me. give you a sign for this one? No. <laughs> no. All right. I put all the signs right. around also. All right. This is a cool one. This is uh, the Tree of Life. It grows super slow. They got a large one when they moved in. And then since I've been working here, it's probably grown about six inches. Tree of Life, is this the Vignum Lycae or whatever? Exactly, yeah. Really? This yeah, is yeah. the Cannonball Tree. 
Is that they made the bearings out of this tree. Yeah, oh, cool. I think so. Or I don't know if cannonball tree, but um, I know they made bearings out of this. A very, very hard wood. Um, and then it makes these really neat little red I can seeds. see some little, yeah. Yeah. Almost yeah, looks they, like a little Suriname cherry, but yellow. Yeah, they open up and these little red berries will fall Pretty out. sure they're quite sensitive because the only one I've seen that was big was Key West. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah they probably are. Wow. Um, and then this is like, what, really well protected in this yard. It is in a little protected microclimate there. Yeah. Right? Ooh. Look at all this cool stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, he's got a lot of neat driftwood pieces that he's put together. Um, we got um, native passion vines growing on pretty much everything. Um, in here, this is uh, some type of Brumthelsia. That's unbelievable looking. And then they are, they're a nighttime <laughs> fragrance plant. So around like the front of the house and the back of the house, there's multiple patches of these different Brumthelsias and they'll bloom at different times and make slightly different odors. Um, one of them's like lady of the night as there's many, many ladies of the wow. night, but it's like very fragrant and beautiful. That's pretty cool. And like they don't spend much time setting around inside, so they set around on their porch and enjoy the fragrance coming from the yard. I smell the sweet almond. We're getting close. Yeah, yeah, it's we're back getting close. Here. We got a bunch of sweet almonds around. This is a neat like yellow mucinda. Ooh. Um, it's a pretty cool little just ornamental. And then like that yellow, I think it's like just the leaf turns that color and then pops up a funny really little unique. flower. That's really unique. I'm familiar with. This is um, some kind of tree jasmine. Oh, so this isn't a rare variety of carrot wood or something? No, that? no. <laughs> That's what I was thinking we coming in. We try to kill all the carrot okay, woods good. around here. This peep thong is the name. It makes a beautiful color flower. Like it's like a purple outside, yellow inside, and then it's super fragrant. Other than having a little wider teardrop leaves, it looks just like carrot wood. Yeah, similar. Wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. have known. Wow. Right, like a dwarf version. Yeah. Well, there's our sweet almond. Another cool plant, this we hacked back really bad after the hurricane, um, but this makes a beautiful flower. It's called um, Jamaican, what is it? It's a... Uh, the native one too? Yeah, yeah. it's a, uh, shoot, another name that leaves my head. But it makes a beautiful fragrant flower mm. um, and it's a native or semi-native. Just um, coming back from the hurricane. Yeah, yeah. Just so people back. know, this place took a pretty serious hurricane. Oh yeah, ago, uh, right? Hurricane Ian totally destroyed a lot of the stuff here, or knocked it down. We pulled up whatever we could, and then we've replanted. So the first area that we walked through that was all flowers. They're flower beds now because they used to be all native trees that fell down. And um, after they fell down, we went through with a new plan on how to do things to be more hurricane resistant in the future. Wow. So for yeah. people wondering, like, can I plant stuff in Florida? What about the hurricanes? And this stuff comes back quick, though. Things come back quick because everything grows quick in Florida if you take care of it. So yeah. if you're building up soil, you're mulching, you give some water, anything will grow. I like it. Um, sweet almond bush. No flowers right there, but... We have Queen's Reef vines in here. Um, we harvested some bamboo from our old bamboo patch that we no longer have that we got rid of after the storm. Um, and then we, we bent them and then bent the vines around. So when they're blooming, it smells amazing and has these pretty purple flowers throughout here. Nice. I love all these archways. A real showstopper zoo here. Whoa. That is um, Seminole hydrangea, Florida hydrangea. Um, they grow really well. We have smaller one up front. Uh, this one's been here since before I came, so it's probably been here about eight to ten years. Um, but it's beautiful, and then for fall, winter time, it's a great thing for the pollinators to get nectar from. Um, is it totally blooms in the winter? Summertime, not as many blooms. I don't know if the camera's catching all the bees, but this is this has more pollinators than the the native tea bush, which yeah. is pretty yeah yeah not not normal yeah I yeah. can't believe how many bees are on here. They work it well. Nice, that's beautiful. We have a bunch of these cool like African marigolds. They look a lot like a cosmos, but they get out of control. So they're huge, make these big plants. They root well with the stalk. And um, when they start looking a little more ratty, then we chop and drop them. And then since they make so much seed, they just keep coming back and coming back and coming back. 
So we like them it's a whole nice lot. Perennial. Yeah. Um, we have a neat little Buddha belly bamboo over there. The, Hiding in the back. The, the true Buddha. The vulgaris. The uh, bambusa vulgaris or whatever. See, it's the true Buddha belly. Or Not the woman was the true one. Wa Wyman. Wyman. So okay, vulgaris yeah. Wyman. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. No thank worries. You. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we recently planted this um, hydrangea and it's a white flowered version. It's just starting to bloom. We haven't seen it bloom yet, so I'm actually pretty excited about going through here and you're looking at it. Um, planted it this year, so it, it came as like a stick that wasn't wide at all, and now it's probably, what, about three and a half feet wide in all directions, maybe more, and probably wow. about four tall. Danielle, is Nick rubbed off on the neighbor a little bit? Like, I don't see any oh, grass right. back there either. Um, so the other, the neighbor is also plant obsessed um and they have like oh god they have so many plants there but they're all they plant very very close they're into having like more variety okay. so she's all about variety and to get like different like plants from key west and different places that she's been and likes wow so yeah there's another a bunch of mangoes hiding in there yeah yeah, yeah some mangoes hiding for sure what is this crazy yellow flower above you oh this is um this is uh, a mallow uh, maybe Bahama mallow. I can't remember what type of mallow, but it's a mallow. So it's like a tree form hibiscus. Nice. And we have different cassias in here. Cassias are also a nice butterfly host. So you see like the chomping on the leaves. We like Is that. Is that them getting in there on the ends? Yep. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's not the, the Sri Lankan weevil. No. Okay. That's a good sign then. <laughs> Fortunately. We want to see that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is... Um, this is a cool plant. If you crush the leaf, it's, it smells like peppers um, mm. or something. It has a neat odor. It's, it's almost Brazilian pepper smelling. Yeah, it, yeah. It, Florida lilac or Jamaican lilac. Mm. So it's like a, a tropical lilac. It's considered like they sell it at the native nursery. It's not totally native, but might as well be. Hey, they're selling it. Yeah. Hey. And That's a pass card. <laughs> it gets nice and big. It also chops and drops well. Like it doesn't re-root too much when you throw it on the ground. Does it start from cuttings easily? It almost it looks like it does. Starts from cuttings really easy. It does, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty, makes like nice pretty flower spikes at the top. They're cool. Wow. Knockout scent we're coming up on. I don't know what it is, but something is strong in here. It could be the, the bohinia, like the Hong Kong orchid tree. Okay, yep. Um, then we also have a bunch of orchids strapped to all these trees on the underside. Oh, some yeah, have been taken care here. of, some haven't, but they Couple still, dried out. Yeah, some dry out, and then the ones that don't, they keep coming back and blooming every year. I love this plant. This is a, another in the Brumfelsia family, common names yesterday, today, tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Um, starts dark purple, turns pink, and then turns white and falls off. And then the fragrance is in the night. Really only scent in the evening then. Yeah. I didn't know that with that one. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So it's eye candy in the day and nose candy at mm. night. I didn't know those orchids had such a nice smell. Yeah. yeah. I have some of those. Wow. Yeah. Um, I think you need the right amount of humidity and temperature for the fragrance to come out. Mm. Nice scent. Um, this area we kind of let go wild. We do have different fragrance bushes that are kind of hiding inside of the flowers, different Brimfelsias and more newly planted gardenias. Um, on the oak tree we have the neat vine called Indian clock vine. It's not flowering right now, it does in the spring, but it makes some really crazy looking flowers. Wow. Wow, these poor mangan orchids are killing it. Yeah, yeah, they're they're gorgeous. You had the more proper name. What did you call this? Um, the Hong Kong orchid? Yeah, or? Hong Kong orchid is the common name of that type. And then the scientific name is Bahinia. I hear a lot of people say Bahinia for I like that, that one. There's like dwarf versions, white color, whatever. But this is like the more common, popular one you could find most places. Hmm. Come up pretty readily from seedlings, but not too invasive. That's good um more fragrance plants and we got another dwarf lang lang i didn't know they even made a dwarf wow and then like i think there's like there's a vining lang lang and then there's um there's another lang lang that i'll show you in a minute 
I love this plant. It's great for borders. It's wild lime. It has these thorns on it that grab you and they never want to let go. <laughs> um, but it's also a host for um, the swallowtail. So it's like, and it's in the citrus family. So I think it's kind of the only native citrus in Florida. Um, and it's for the swallowtail, giant swallowtail. Interesting. Thorns like citrus, and then it does have that wide, kind of like a seedling citrus. Yeah. Wow. And it make like this little fruit, but not really a fruit that just seeds, and they seed pretty readily, and they come up a lot of places. Um, but it's, it's a native that I like. Not necessarily do I like them coming up in my pathways, but I love them on the edges. Okay. Um, edges are made for thorns. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> we got the cool... Um, Look at the flowers on that thing. Yeah, they're, it's, it's going they're dormant out, right but now. They're falling off give right me an idea. now. Wow. Um, but this thing is super fragrant. It's um, Gardenia nitida. Um, amazing gardenia. Ultra fragrant, like more than any other gardenia you'll find. Really? And it flushes flowers. So like they'll all come at once fall off a couple weeks later flush out again like it had some that are trying to pop up over there too on the other side yeah let's see if we can find that guy Whoa. and then the bloom on this so this is the same as the one that we were walking oh, yeah. through yeah. that funny looking tree and then it makes this nice little flower very fragrant the peep thong oh this yeah. is that crazy little gardenia oh Oh, is that a fresh one? Oh, right here. It's not oh, that's a new yet, spike. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's pushing another flush. That must be the full size. Yeah. Um, Weeping Lang Lang is that one. Um, that Lang Lang. makes so many flowers and it's ultra fragrant. Did that get a pruning from the hurricane? Yeah. Major pruning. Major pruning. Okay. Um, but even we, we're known to give it a major pruning anyways. Like you could cut that thing back to a stump and in two years it'll be like that again. Right back. Yeah. At, at least in this area. So, vigorous, yeah, yeah, they're they're vigorous growers, and yeah, you don't you don't really want to let them get too big. Oh, this guy looks happy. Yeah, this is one of the grimmels we got. From oh, here. look at all the new red growth that wasn't here when I brought it. No, no, it's looking That's much exciting. happier. That's exciting. Yeah. Oh, oh, we have another one, and then like we and that is beautiful. Nice pots. Yeah. It's... Guys, check out the seven gallon grimmel. <laughs> I'm loving it. All right. We got another one of your grimmels over here. This one's also looking like a beauty and they're happy yeah they're all flushing yeah they're liking your water that's yeah, a good yeah. sign we haven't we haven't neglected them one bit man no lack of mulch here either huh no um we have become mulch obsessed this year okay. um rick drives around on the tractors for his entertainment while doing a lot of work for the place dropping mulch everywhere and then i'll rake it up and then he we've been we used to get a lot of manure from the local horse stables but now we've moved over mostly to just mulch, turning mulch, turning it into dirt, and then we'll run it through our dirt sifting machine, and then we'll use that in our beds and everywhere. Pretty awesome. And that's how... Yep. What, what, this thing is catching my eye. What, what do we have this here? This is um, Panama Rose. What? Grows easy from cuttings. It's like, it's like a, a tree form of a penta, but instead of having five flowers, it's got four. So it's like a quatra. I feel like I'm slacking here, Daniel. Why don't I have this one? <laughs> you need one. We need this, yes. <laughs> here. Look at the butterflies in here dancing. Is it really that easy? Yeah. From a cutting? Wow. I really is like a tree form penta with skinnier leaves. I mean, a little bit longer. Oh, he's got his... Hori Hori, what are we working with? Oh, this is, uh, this is my nice spider co knife. Spider co knife, okay. It even says Daniel's knife, so you know whose it is. Oh, wow. Right. That's not your regular garden knife, no. Made in Japan, Siki City. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Sweet. just stick them in some water or stick them in a pot. Yeah. The uh, the rainbow eucalyptus get a pruning too? Oh, yeah. It used to be taller. You can see the top was cut out. Again. Yeah, it's filling back out though. Um, we found though that they actually, they're quite easy to propagate. So we've been doing a little propagating on them. Nice. From cuttings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just cuttings, root cuttings, pretty easy. Oh. I like I like plants that you're able to do that with. I haven't figured out grafting too well yet. This is uh, Chinese dogwood. 
Um, uh, it's also called Milky Way plant. And it, up there, if you look at the top, it has like those two little oh, bananas. It's almost like a fruit, yeah. Yeah, and like then it'll open up and has these red seeds inside. That's and a flower? it's a uh, fragrant. Um, fragrant that too. is the fruit of the flower. Wow. It makes these white flowers that are nicely fragrant. That's unique. <laughs> um, so. Um, what is this wannabe a crepe myrtle? That's not a crepe myrtle. I don't remember the name of this one. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, it's an ornamental plant that they had planted way before I came in. I can't remember what it is. Hmm. And then like our scorpion tails go insane around here because of our soil so good. Sometimes a little too good. Now the soil wasn't always this good. No, no. We've been building up this soil for a long time. Um, and as I said, we used to build it up with manure. Um, but now we're building it up with mulch. And then like my mom has a microgreen growing business. So we go to pick up her spent soil every other week. And then we'll throw that around and then we'll get like her different microgreens to grow around the property, but in full size. So like if you came back in a couple of months, you'll see like daikons growing wildly. Oh Last year I was pulling out turnips endlessly and kale and collards and choys and whatever. And like they just pop up all throughout our garden beds. That's pretty cool. Wow. Uh, we got a little sapodilla over here that was existing. I see some fruits on it. This was here? Yeah. Wow. Uh, I think it's macaque variety, so it's a the dwarf version. Yeah. Um, super slow grower. It's been setting fruit since we started taking care of it. I'm still not fully sure on when to harvest them. So the, the trick with the sapodilla, I know you just do a little scratch. And uh -huh. when you scratch and green, not ripe. Um, but when you scratch and it's more of a brown color, uh -huh. that's when you can pull them off the tree and they'll ripen inside. Kind of yeah. like an avocado wants to be inside to ripen also. Still green. Yeah, we've got yeah. a couple more days. Now, for the viewers, like this is the old property line, right? Yeah. So this was the original kind of yeah, this butterfly thing. scent inspired yeah. native gardens. Yeah. And then we get this side, which yeah. is the addition. Yep, yeah, this is where they purchased and then Margie, Rick's wife, has a glass studio. She, she does neat glass art, and then she teaches classes and things inside of she there. She sells at the local markets and stuff? Yep, local nice. art markets and things. Cool. Yep. So this is, what, but this real exciting part here is this is where the edible stuff kind of started to happen, right? After the orchids? Uh, <laughs> edibles first started happening over there, and then they've crept in over here. Okay. Um, like so <laughs> they've just been creeping all over now. Um, and then I... I'm like into edibles nat naturally, like that's what I've been into since I've been a kid. So it's like, um, I've managed farms and I've had my own microgreen business and I've done many things. So it's like, I love edibles and I'm glad that they also now love edibles. I love it. I love it, all plants really, but it's just like edibles, like they give you a little bit more. Definitely a little bit more to get excited about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Another one of these epic archways. Yeah, we have, this is our rehab area for some orchids that weren't doing so well underneath our main orchid house. Um, so we're, we're rehabbing them here. This is the orchid rehab zone. So we got the show orchids up front, the rehab orchids up yeah. back. Okay. And then we have our host plants hanging out over it. Nice. Some more natives. Papaya randomly popped up there, but it's doing so happy. So we just left it there, setting some fruit now. Volunteer. Oh, in there, there's this crazy papaya I want to show you. It just popped up a couple months ago. Yeah, remind me of the total property size here. Yeah, 1.6 acres. So we're at 1.6 acres with no grass. In the city. For the most part, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean. We're pretty close uh, to downtown. Englewood, I mean, I, I wouldn't call us a city. We're a little town, but yeah, we're, <laughs> we're right near our downtown. Very urban area, I guess. And like this, so this popped up like maybe Whoa. four months ago, like just from random seeds. Things a freak. Yeah, I've never seen it just like, I've seen them slowly grow, but this thing is like totally it's like a freak. A tree, yeah. yeah it's it's like, already got flowers on it. Like 15 feet tall now or something. What yeah. is this beautiful thing to the right? Do you know what that's called? Um, I can't remember. We planted that last year. They went to a plant show. It's supposed to, it's like a, a tropical flowering tree, but I can't remember what it's mm. called. I see our Turk's cap. We gotta have Turk's cap in yeah. here. Yeah, we got Turk's cap like it crazy. Oh, they grow very well in the area. Oh, More Brumfelsias. Those. those are gorgeous. And behind it is the yesterday, today, tomorrow, but not flowering right now. Smaller. And then we have like the um, 
perennial pentas. Real penta? Yeah, those things are so much nicer than the ones you find at Home Depot. They'll last for 20 years, yeah. Yeah, and the other ones die in like six months. They don't last at No, all, and then they're not even nearly as pretty. Like the how vibrant that flower is, is awesome. You guys heard that, right? I've been telling you about that perennial penta. <laughs> I did not tell him to do that. <laughs> and I didn't even tell you guys those pentas. I'm pretty sure no, you had No, those. no, no. Yeah. We've been having these things. We got them from, like, Rick used to buy stuff from Charlie Crowley years back. And so we got them from him. And then we've been propagating them ourselves since then. Nice. So it's like we, we keep sending them around, planting them in different places. Keep them in pots. Get tired of them being in a pot, send them to the ground. Pretty awesome. It's not blooming right now, but the, oh, it is a little bit. It's like a dwarf powder puff. Yeah, this is the dwarf caliandra thing. Yeah. Over here, we got into earth boxes in the past couple of years. Um, I was a little doubtful at first, but Rick bought eight of them. He's like, let's give these a try. So I was like, eh, whatever, let's do it. And we grew tomatoes in them originally. I was blown away. So we started with like eight, and now we probably have probably like 60, 80, something crazy. Now you've uh, done some side-by-side -side comparisons too, right? I mean, yeah. Like this isn't just... No, we've done tomatoes side-by-side -side in the ground and in an earth box. Earth box outperforms them in the length of time they're able to fruit before, like they won't get disease, like they'll get diseased way after the ones in the ground. Um, you can kind of leave the dirt inside the box and keep replanting. Uh, they're, it's like, they wick water up from the bottom of the box, so it keeps your plants having the right amount of moisture all the time. You can't go wrong with them. On this one, there's a little uh, butterfly that's going in the cocoon. And that's a polydomus. I see you over there, little dude. We got strawberries, strawberries coming on, huh? Yeah. I mean, you think Inglewood, I think coconuts. You guys are growing vegetables and yeah, vegetables strawberries and, and onions. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Tomatoes. We have, uh, we're, we're starting to get some coconuts around the property, but it'll be, it'll be a while till we have more. What is this, a chipper? I mean, like, that's one thing, Daniel, I have to say, first time I came here, like, you got no lack of tools. Uh-huh. Tractors and soil uh, buddies and oh, yeah, mulchers. Yeah. Like, you got the tools for the job here. We got, sure. we got everything that you need. Yeah. And then if we don't, then Rick will acquire it. <laughs> Compost tea brewers. Yes. I mean, yeah, definitely so not messing around. We got a, a yeah a chipper for the back of the bigger tractor that Rick oh, got earlier the in the year. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So it, yeah, it's a PTO driven Even chipper. Even better. Yeah. No gas required. Don't have to worry about letting it sit there. Yeah, totally. Um, and it ch does a pretty good job, but chip anything under four inches. That's nice. Uh, we have a bunch of these um, ferns hanging around too. Staghorns. Yeah. Stag yeah. Staghorn fern. I love those. Those are beautiful. Got a little worm box somebody gave us that we've been playing with for a little while. Um, and then our, um, this is our new like planting area. Um, got a bunch of dirt for our earth boxes. We're always like out, always planting some more stuff. So it's a little bit in the shade. So this is where we are right now. And then we're going to be getting a new tea hut built in the next couple of weeks and then that'll be our new planting area. Everything's moving under there. Huh? Everything's moving to the tiki. Nice. The whole back hedgerow is majority native native trees. Other than the turpentine mango, it's a, yeah, another yeah. buffer. Okay. The turpentine was there. It used to be really tall. We cut it back and then we've been cutting it back hard ever since then just to I don't know, shape it, make it look a little neater. Um, we don't really need the the seed stock or anything. We just tool around, so we're just happy to have it. We have a little nursery that we have over here for some of our obsessive growing. Often just give things away. Is this for when somebody comes and they get excited to just give them one? Pretty much. Nice. All right. Yeah, pretty much. I uh, like <laughs> have all sorts of stuff. Um, and then like I got a couple jackfruit seedlings in there that I got out of a fruit that weighed like three pounds and they consistently come off the tree and they're about three pounds. So it's like I'm trying to collect varieties of jackfruits that are small fruits so that they sell well at my market. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. rather than like, not many people want a 20 pound fruit to bring home and then take an hour and a half to take the thing apart. It's a job, it's like yeah. cleaning an animal. I mean, it really is. Yeah, no, it's, a, into something, it's you know? amazing. Yeah. Uh, let's go in the greenhouse oh. and check out what we've been doing in there. This is also a new addition we set up. Um, we got three beds in it. We're just kind of seeing what happens. Um, 
most everything here we're just playing around. So we got some rows of radishes and some beets and some other things that are all seedling and then little patches of stuff to just see how it grows and how tight we can get everything. Um, maybe even just cut it as a microgreen. Nice. Got some zucchinis in the middle. It's already flowering. Yeah, got a little fruit setting. The tomatoes, like, I made the soil a little too rich initially, so some of them got a little burnt up. Um, and then the ones that didn't get burnt up are growing really good. Um, and I've never grown in a greenhouse before, so we're trying out this like string trellising and all that. So this is new for you, also. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't really have any conclusions about it yet, but I've been having fun doing it. Um, so far, they've been growing really well, but I think the earth box. I think the earth box is going to win, but we'll find out. I like the comparison. You're constantly, you know, wanting to know which is doing better. So that's awesome. Yeah, we got our little earth box area. These are our newer tomatoes here. We're setting some rosemaries between them. Hopefully, I like, feel like these are almost smaller than those when I came here last. Like those are like yeah. trees over there yeah, now. Yeah. 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 So in another month, they will look like the ones over there. Incredible. Um, we don't do any spraying here, so we don't spray like Bacillus thuringiensis, we don't spray like Bouveria bassiana, we don't spray any of the good stuff to kill the larvae because we're trying to keep all the butterflies here. So it's like there are larvae that we don't want, but normally we'll just, we take the hit, we lose fruit, and I hand pick. Um, my house I'll use some like bio pesticides, but here we don't use anything like that. Now you said you guys have seen 40s here once. Did you do any kind of protection for the tomatoes or anything mm. on that night? No. No, no they were no fine. Need. Yeah, fine. Oh. Um, I have a couple small soursop plants at my house that I brought in because okay. I don't want to damage them. But other than that, everything's well, fine. You said you see frost here every year. You've even seen it at 40 here. Frost every year. I'm a native Inglewoodian. Um, Inglewoodian. La yeah. <laughs> like last, year, last year it frosted at 40, and i never seen that before. But we get below 35 here every year. Okay. Um, and when it does, it's usually for... A short period of time maybe the tips of the mango leaves will burn ideally they're not flowering so we get good mango production but this year they're already flowering so i'm hoping for the best that's pretty unbelievable south of sarasota west side of 75 and you're still getting frost every year still getting frost i don't believe wow. that new usda map no. because it's like they say we're supposed to be 10b we are 10a on good years and then like every decade or so we do go below 30 so it's i bet in the next 10 years we'll see below 30 again so it's just like it's a 9b night right there yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, wow i always hope not but i mean it seems cycles always get a little warmer and cooler oh, more veg yeah more veg um we're practicing like just seeing how much grows in a box like to get the best size vegetable um, with kale and collards and the square size we found one plant will grow or one box gr grows one plant massively but then the parsley needs more plants per box because one plant won't wick up enough water at once and then it'll just rot in there you want them to all be about the same speed well, well yeah, yeah so it's like they have to be pulling out a certain amount of water to keep the soil dry for their root zone so it's like some plants want more water some want less water the plants that want less water you got to plant more of them inside of the box or that, that's just my you know hair-brained experience <laughs> Got some volunteer tomatoes going. We got three no, different this, varieties. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we had these rotten. So we were putting them in the pots. We we're gonna wait until they pop up, and then we we're gonna prick them out of here, and then plant them around the property. This is how we start them. I like it. Yeah, they were just trying it out. So like those are like Campari's from the store, and you can't buy Campari tomatoes. These They're ones are hybrid. Yeah. yeah. So it's like we're gonna see what we get out of them. These are sun golds, and sun golds are also hybrid. But sometimes like sometimes they come up similar. Sometimes they come up different. But always they're good. Um, hmm. And then these are uh, Japanese black tomato, which is an heirloom, so they should come up true. Nice. Uh, we're just tooling around mostly here. I know everybody's going to be excited to see this one. This used to be called Dirt Buddy. And this is called what now? The multi screener. The multi screener, which you can get them for about 1200 bucks in the yep. USA, right? Yep. And they're, it's a solid machine. We've been using this for about six months and 
I've sifted probably 10 piles like this by now um, or more. Um, I've been making the soil lighter by adding in perlite. I'll acidify it with some peat moss and then we use our mulch compost because all this compost is down from the mulch. So free mulch instead of buying compost has allowed you to not buy compost because of this machine anymore. Pretty much. Wow. Yeah, and then like we'll put it in pots and then we keep, so if we don't keep the dirt in the pot and we want to dump it out, we'll dump it back into the pile, re-sift and reuse all of our dirt. So it's like never throw away good dirt. Like dirt can only be made better and better and better over the years. I like it. Often I'll be wearing a, at the minimum a shirt over my face to keep the particular cell. Yeah. Then I'll throw in some azomite. Um, and then we get the garden tone easily around here, so we'll throw some garden tone in there. Nice. Uh, have a little bit of um, vermiculite as well if we want more soil water retention. All right, so new cheeky hut coming to this area. Yep. And these are like legit Native Americans coming to build this thing, right? Yes. No um, tape measures. Like these dudes just show up with a trailer, some logs, and some palm fronds. Pretty much, yeah. They'll show up with all the materials. They'll then, well, a crew brings the materials. Then the next day, the workers will come. They look like very Native Native people. It's awesome having them here. They're great workers. Last time they built a, the other one over Labor Day weekend. The day that they took off was Labor Day. Wow. Um, okay. And then they come from the other coast. So they drive over and back every day. Um, they do an amazing job and they'll tell you that they're gonna start it on a day and then they'll start it on that day. They actually show yeah. up, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Accountability, that's pretty hard to come by these days. Totally, it's, it's amazing. So pretty soon guys, there'll be another one of those bad boys, which I'm pretty sure they even harvest the fronds on a certain moon stage, um, just for longevity too. But yeah, I've heard no tape measures. I mean, these yeah, guys no are amazing. Measures, no permits yeah. required because no. they're Florida yeah. natives. Yeah. Yeah. That's the loophole with these. You will never need a permit because they're yeah, Seminoles, Florida right? natives. Yeah, yeah, Seminoles do it. And then, um, yeah, that's why it doesn't need a permit. It's like they're allowed to do it and they're the only people allowed to do it. You can't build your own tiki or else you'd be fined. You need the permit. Yeah, yeah you need a permit then. It's pretty messed up. Uh, let, let's walk over to the tomatoes. You got to finish out tomatoes and orchids before we go edible? Yeah. Well, right. tomato, I mean, we're edible. Right. We're vegetable edible. Then we'll move over to the fruit tree. All right. Got composting zones here and oh, no, this is a, a good new sweet almond. Comparison nice. Comparison between. So it's like these were planted about one one month after these behind them. And those are a week, ten days from harvest, right? Probably. Like it's hard with tomatoes to know when, but it's like it's going to be soon and it's going to be continual once it starts happening. Like uh, my customers at the market are all like, when are the tomatoes coming? When are the tomatoes coming? I'm like, I don't know when they're coming, but I know when they do come, they'll keep coming. So I wish I could tell you when, but I don't even know. And primarily you said you did slicers. I know our tomato... Uh... Mostly slicers. We like doing tasty, like tasty leaf variety does really well here. Charger. Um, Celebrity, uh, Loretta, um, then we'll even grow some heirloomy kinds. But what I found last year is like, if you grow in the right soil with the right fertilizer, and we're spraying them with like um, worm tea and all this other amazing stuff, mineral stuff in there, like not synthetic minerals, but like earth minerals. So they they have more flavor than you'll ever have out of any Florida tomato or ground grown tomato. Hmm. Um, so the slicers are sweet with a tartness and it's everything a tomato should be. You make me crave a tomato just talking about yeah, it. Keep yeah, yeah, me, me too, me <laughs> too. I, I miss eating them. So this is onions over here and yep. propagation zone. 
That little trellis. What is that? What's going on top of there? Is that the Tindora? Um, that, or is that May the... Pop. May Pop, really? Yeah, May Pop Passion Flower. Look at all the fruit. Yeah, yeah, they fruit like mad. I wish my fruiting passion fruit fruited that much. This is the Passiflorian Canarda then? Yeah. Wow. What do you say that leaf? Uh, cool. It's like variegated over here. Yeah, that's May Pop. If not, it's not. Oh, that corky. is the other native one. That's the other native one. I know what you're talking about. Because there's corky stem also. Yeah. That's what I think that is. Okay, is it corky? Yeah. Okay. That would be right. Yeah, the corky then. Now you said you, tell us about your onions. Okay, so these onions, um, these are Florida sweet variety. We're planting, and these I've planted, I think we're around about 20 tomato, or 20 onions per earth box. Some have like 24 in them. Um, last season we got these beautiful big like big old onions that were sweet and they had a really long shelf life rick braided them up and hung them and like they lasted shoot before we i mean like we had them hanging for a couple months but then we ate them all out even before they rotted so like three months or more that is impressive they were great oh um, my wow so we have these few boxes but then over by the greenhouse we have like 11 more boxes so i think we're up to like 17 earth boxes filled with onions this season um at like 24 per earth box do the math but that's going to be a lot of damn onions <laughs> <laughs> you guys could supply uh outback with uh greens for a while but <laughs> We're trying, oh, this is cool. I found this the other day. We have just like some different potted citrus, but then found- um, I see it on there. It's the chrysalis of the, um, probably the giant swallowtail. Wow. I've never seen that before until the other day. Will that be there till spring? No, that'll probably hatch out in another week or two. This is really close, wow. Yeah. Nice. Uh, we got some gummy chamas a little while ago to try out. I hear they need a lot of water. Um, so we set them in earth boxes and they're doing really good. A lot of new growth. Look at all the red on there. Yeah. I'm very happy. Yeah, it's just growing. So they're super happy and like it's perpetually pulling up water from the base. Hmm. Um, I think there's two gallons. It doesn't look like a normal earth box. It's just like a regular pot, but yeah, it yeah. has that two layer in yeah. there, huh? Okay. Um, nice. like that's uh, one of their later models. Nice. Got a neat, um, mac nut tree here. It makes quite a bit of fruit. You keep the squirrels away yeah yeah it makes a lot of fruit but it's hard getting them look at these tomatoes tucked in everywhere yeah tomatoes tomatoes everywhere. rick even tried citrus for a little bit huh yeah and then we got citrus in earth boxes um they they come and go with their health right now we're spraying them a lot with um like worm tea and different things that we've just started in the past couple weeks so we're hoping it brings more life to them hoping that we could kind of overcome all the many citrus diseases, but it's unlikely, but I have hope. As long as we get some citrus, it's nice. Daniel, I feel like I asked you last time I was here, what, what is that? That is um, climbing aster. That's what it is. Yeah. It's a uh, Florida native. That is gorgeous. Sometimes you find them climbing up pines in the- I think like I've seen them in the forest, yeah. yeah. Pine flatwoods, wow. Yeah, and they're- it's Covered in gorgeous. bees too. Covered. We need this. Yeah, yeah, I think everybody, everybody needs a little Climbing bit. Climbing killing it. I've yeah. never seen it thrive like this. It's taken a number of years for it to do this. There's even, there's some stumps inside of there that it's climbed onto, and there might have been some orchids in there that they overcame. Because mm. we used to have like some orchids screwed into stumps there. Okay. But it did so well and looked so beautiful, we just forgot about everything inside of there. We got this from you a couple, like a month ago. Oh, is this the yellow? Yeah, this is the yellow. I haven't seen a fruit on it yet, but I can't wait. You know, once they start, they don't stop. Yeah, oh, here totally. we go. We got a little flower starting in there. I think. Oh, cool. It's coming. Yeah, on the red, I've been eating them when they pop up. Have they been pumping? Oh, a little bit here and there. A little bit, okay. In here, ready? yeah, this little water feature, we have cardinal flower which you'll find up in your zone in the riverways. Like, uh, it's a native, we yeah. go down Wikiwachi. Mm -hmm. Like, it's all throughout Wikiwachi. And it makes a beautiful red flower. Um, took us a while to figure out how to grow them, but they love growing in these pots of standing water. Mm. I took some pictures of that a couple years back on the Wikiwachi and sent it to a friend. And yeah. He, he told me what I was, I don't see it often enough to, one of the, I'm one of those people that have to see things uh -huh. 10 times to remember it. So. Yeah, yeah. Like I've seen that now I just need to remember the name, but some more banana land out here. Yeah, wow. this was our second banana area. Um, we've lost a couple, like 
The past summer was kind of rough on the bananas as we didn't really get much rain in the state. We irrigate a lot, but with, uh, with lack of rain, lack of cloud, lack of everything a banana wants, it was too hot, so a lot of them burnt out. So we're gonna replant a couple dwarf namwas since they do best here. We have some different varieties. We have um, Sweetheart, we have Dwarf Namwa, we have Mona Lisa in here, we have Pisang Selon, which is one of my favorite tasting bananas, but often fall down before they make a is nice that it bunch. Is over there? Yeah, this yeah. tall one. And it's getting ready to throw out a bunch at the top. I think the flowers are about to come out. Um, we have Rajpuri here, and Somebody, we may have an ice cream up on the corner because Rick wanted one. We bought in three things labeled ice cream. Oh. Um, none of them have been, but this one might be, but haven't seen it fruit yet. There's a lot of ice cream imposters out there, huh? Yeah, but in the true Java, my opinion, it is not worth the flavor or like trying to find it. Like it looks cool, but it's nowhere near as good as a Namwa. Like Namwa will blow it away any day. Don't buy the hype, huh? Yeah, yeah, well, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it, all right. If you love hyperbole, you'll love the ice cream banana. All right. How does the orchid zone get water? Is that all hand water too? Hand water. Wow. Um, like now I'm a lot busier growing food stuff around here, um, but I do still, I keep like That's a couple around. hours for irrigating. And then Rick has another lady that's coming by to help out with potting and weeding and some other things. Hours daily or weekly? Um, whenever she's got time, like okay. some some hours here yeah. and there. Um, this area, like it, it's. I literally thought this was a showroom nursery the first time I came here. I'm like, look at this. What? And things aren't blooming so much right now, but the blooms come and go. But it's a lovely little place. He had like this carport built a few years back. And instead of ever driving a car in here, it became the plant port. The so plant port, I we, like it. I call it the grand plant port. Is there a certain time of year where orchids are flowering more often? Um, different times for different ones. Some need like a temperature change. Some need to grow out so many leaves. Some need a certain amount of light. Like mm. there's a lot of factors for orchids blooming. Do you have any tricks for us? Um, feed them every time you water them. What, and like don't fish? water them too much. Um, whatever you feed them with, like, I don't think it really matters. Like, they, they want, like, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, doesn't matter. Like, you just spray something good on them, even, like, worm tea, and they'll love it. They react well. Okay. Um, even, like, if you just spray, like, I even tried just spraying microbial products with a little bit of, like, molasses in it, and they like that. Wow. So. They're not too particular about that, but they're particular to amounts of water, depending on their substrate. So is that why they're under here, too much water, and sometimes? Or that was the original thought? Uh, I think they're just collected under here because it, this has a lot more shade than outside. So they, do, they don't want direct light upon most orchid varieties, but some want like indirect light or side light. This is really cool. And then Rick, when he has time, when it's raining, he'll put together these driftwood things. He makes the driftwood arrangements? Yeah, really? he makes all the driftwood arrangements. I like it. Yeah. yeah. And then even like for a while, we went and somebody was clearing a piece of property locally. So we went and got all the lighter wood, like all the heart pine. Mm -hmm. And then we fixed a lot of orchids on the heart pine. And then I was like chainsawing down heart pine and like put, for putting orchids on. You got nine sets of whoppers over here. You, they, keep, we, they keep you prepared with these souls, huh? We've we got no shortage of anything here. I like it. Uh, we aren't minimalists, we're maximalists. All right. <laughs> oh. When it comes to gardening, you have to be ready. Isn't that the truth? What's been your biggest success here? I'd say the bananas. Bananas? Yeah. yeah. Um, though, like, it's not the best time to be looking at them. I mean, they're all, they, we got a lot of bananas right now. We just had a nippy night, too. Yeah. Dwarf Namwa. That's um, a fatty. Yeah. Normally, I start every patch with one, and then I'll keep, like, three per. But then, since our soil is so charged, I let them now sp spread out, and then I'll let, like, one clump become two clumps, and then I'll kind of do, like, three per that one clump. So here... We have some extras coming up, but we got like this big bad boy that's fruiting. We got this one that will be fruiting, and we got this one that'll be replacing it. 
and then this one, this one's fruiting. Then we got the next one that will be fruiting, and then this one to replace it. Wow. And then we got this. This is a this Mona one's coming Lisa. coming in over here too, huh? Yeah, so this is a Mona Lisa banana. Um, this is the replacer. Oh, uh, and then we got Sweetheart up in there. It doesn't have a rack on it, but Sweetheart makes the biggest banana you've ever seen in your life. Like one right banana weighs a pound. A pound banana? Literally a pound when the thing's done wow. well. Um, they taste good, but you got to eat them once they turn yellow because they turn mushy pretty quick. Oh, they get really soft. Yeah, huh? and that was also like part of the FHIA project. Um, Mona Lisa, way better shelf life, way better flavor, um, not as big of a banana, so they're more saleable. So I'd say like for saleable bananas in Florida that resemble a Cavendish, Mona Lisa is the way to go. The but one. for most reliable, Dwarf Namwa. You mm. can't beat the Dwarf Namwa. This guy actually looks like a real citrus. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's on, got a huh? bunch of fruit on it. Um, I haven't tried the fruit yet since it's orange and up, um, but this is a sugar bell. So like sugar bell is supposed to be on a resistant, a greening resistant rootstock. From the health of this plant, I would say that it might be possible. <laughs> Doesn't look horrible. No, 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 I mean, this is the best looking citrus we have on the property. Damn. We got uh, this um, curry leaf coming up. It's like a giant bush now, it's overgrowing. I need to chop it you can back. You smell it. Yeah. It needs yeah. to move over to the scent garden, huh? Nice and fragrant. Planted all these sweet potatoes in here. Um, I think it was a bad idea this summer. I think they robbed my bananas of their moisture and their food, and I think that contributed to them having a bad summer. Really? Uh, it's just my harebrained idea, but I got to thinking, it's like, why my bananas have been doing so well every year, even if we don't get a lot of rain. Um, they didn't do well this year. So this is the big change was the sweet potato. And then I thought like bananas feeding roots are on the top. Sweet potatoes are all rooted throughout the top of the soil. So they might have some sort of uh, competition Yeah, competition with one another. Yeah. And like I took my permaculture design course. I've read the Bill Mollison book. They're supposed to do well together, but in my experience, bananas and sweet potatoes don't get along. Not doing it for you. Well. So next time we do sweet potatoes, we're gonna do them in their own area. Oh, uh, some Meyer lemons that we're trying to get back into shape. Um, it, it's coming back looking better. Like sometimes it'll have less leaves, sometimes more. Now it's going through having more leaves and it's starting to flower again. But citrus, sadly, has is having a bad time right now. This is a citrus though. We have some hope for it. It's, uh, this is the giant finger lime. Mm. We're getting some fruit on it. They're supposed to be resistant too. Yeah, yeah, totally. No. And it definitely is. It doesn't even get the leaf miner. No, it looks good. Um, but it should have more fruit. Haven't figured out what will make it fruit more. I might need to thin it out better, prune it, uh, beat it up more. I haven't figured it out. But it does regularly fruit. It's just I would figure it should be making more. Old timers used to say smack them. Smack yeah. them with the baseball bat. Yeah. Wake them up. Yeah. I did give it a beating this year, but not probably not strong enough. Whoa, so Daniel's job, pretty tough, right? Could you imagine having to work here every day? Guys, this is pretty epic. I'm not gonna rush this one. This is definitely going to be a two-part. I hope you enjoyed part one. Glad to be back here behind the camera. Um, stay tuned, part two is coming soon. Oh yeah, by the way, pound dirt.